monetizing digital services since 2004, boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG, where innovation meets monetization. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. You enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Peggy Sullivan about her book, Happiness is Your Responsibility. Peggy Sullivan, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. So great to be here. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from the Palm Beach area today. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about your recent book, Happiness is Your Responsibility. And we'll also be getting into some time management um, types of topics in relation to your new forthcoming book that will be coming out soon. Uh, as we get started, I wanted to share Peggy's bio with everybody. Peggy Sullivan is a women's leadership speaker, mindset expert, and founder of the nonprofit organization She Can. She is also the author of the book, Happiness is Your Responsibility. She is a strong advocate utilizing the power of happiness to achieve personal and professional success. She has won numerous awards and honors, including the 2019 uh, Women in Leadership Award from New York State. Peggy has also been featured in Forbes, Women, Fox, and ABC Radio, and has presented and consulted worldwide for organizations such as Bank of America, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Ingram Micro, and Women Up Conferences. So Peggy, it's a pleasure to have you. Anything else you would like to share with me or my audience by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? No, let's let's dive in. Very good. Uh, so why don't we start uh, with you just telling us a little bit about the origin story behind the book? I always like to hear uh, how they come to be, why this book, why now, um, and why the new book that you're working on, why is it important uh, for us to be talking about these topics? That's a great question and one I have huge passion around. My name is Peggy Sullivan, and I am a recovering addict. Like all addictions, my addiction has cost me dearly. It destroyed my first marriage. It ruined many a job. And it also destroyed my personal and professional health on so many occasions. And you may be wondering, what am I addicted to? Because really, I have to say I am an addict because we just get really, really good at controlling our desires. We never really get cured. My addiction was and is to busyness. Eat, work, sleep, repeat. Busyness is an addiction that really plagues almost all of Americans. I've been doing research over the last 10 years, and 75% of Americans are over-the-top busy and don't have time for what's important. And 63% of them don't have time for basic things like self-care, For me, busyness is personal, and it's an epidemic, and I have been working to help people get past busyness because I know for me, it's something that really deteriorated the quality of my life. Yeah, and I think that's it's largely a cultural thing in the West, isn't it? Uh, You know, I, I think that's something that most people really struggle with. We have this narrative that to be happy and successful is to be busy uh, and to constantly do more. Uh, And while certainly I'm an advocate for, you know, 
working on yourself, developing on yourself, uh, delayed gratification so that you can invest now in, you know, outcomes in the future and, and all those sorts of things. Uh, and so, you know, laying around and doing nothing all day is not what I would suggest for anybody, but th- that's not the problem most people have. Most people have the opposite problem where we're just running nonstop um, and running ourselves ragged. We're not doing the basic things to take care of ourselves mentally and physically uh, to foster, you know, the healthy relationships that are going to be important to us in the long run. And ultimately, we burn out. You just can't keep up that pace uh, and you can't, you can't run on all cylinders all the time and be successful. You just can't. Uh, yeah, and, and I think I many think people, I'm... many people have convinced themselves that they can, uh, but they've, they've lost sight of what it's like to truly be able to pause and recharge and, and attack challenges f- from a fresh place um, because they, they, it's been so long since they've been able to do it. I couldn't agree with you more. And I I have really been spending a lot of time trying to understand like why we do it because it's self-induced many times. And really the reality is, is that it is a status symbol in today's day and age. I did a social experiment and I asked a couple of hundred people how they were doing with every expectation that people would tell me how their physical and mental being was. But nobody said that. 94% said, I'm so busy. And I, I do think it's it's fashionable to be busy. You think about that doctor you want to get into. He must be really good. He's really busy. I can't see him for six months. Or even personal choices you make. I've had a toothache. You know, why am I not going to the dentist? Well, I'm too busy. You know, it's not a priority. So it definitely is cultural and it definitely is something that we bring on ourselves. But there is a way out. There is a way to make more conscious, intentional decisions. And I'm here to tell you, and it took me, I'm 64 years old. It took me probably 60 years to figure this all out. Um, And I've worked with a lot of people to help them get off the busy treadmill. But it is it is possible. It, It is. And when you do, there's quality of life waiting for you, which is so much bigger than bright, shiny things we tend to chase. Yeah. And just doing more. I mean, you have to ask yourself why, uh, like, and uh, people have different life stages. You know, I, I have a PhD. Let me tell you, going through a PhD program while working multiple jobs and, and growing my family, you know, I have six children, like all of that's happening at the same time. That was an insane, crazy, busy period of my life. Uh, and I'm glad I hunkered down. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad, you know, my wife and I were able to get through it. And she also has a doctorate, you know, so we're, we're just, we were in that, that mode of life for a long time. Uh, and I'm glad we got through it. And I'm, that has provided the opportunity for us to do what we do today. So that's great. Right. And I, and I am a believer that, you know, th- there are sacrifices that need to be made, um, so that you can do, you know, what you're passionate about. Um, but that said, uh, you know, I can't imagine having continued with that kind of hectic pace uh, for forever. I I think it would have been incredibly unhealthy. I don't think it would have been sustainable. Um, And I I wouldn't be able to do like the vast majority of the cool, creative, fun things that I do today. I I simply wouldn't be able to do had I maintained that kind of a lifestyle and that kind of a pace. Um, And, and I, and I wouldn't be happy. Um, and so, you know, I think there's a clear connection between, you know, these two books, your, your, your last Mm -hmm. book and the one you're currently working on around happiness and, and how we deal with our time and our overall busyness. Um, again, it's not the false dichotomy of like, you're either doing nothing or you're being super busy. Like there's a huge spectrum and there's a lot of room in between to where you can still be super efficient and productive and accomplish great things and, um, still have a very successful career and also practice self-care and maintain your mental and physical health and focus on your relationships and foster, you know, uh, those types of uh, opportunities. Uh, it, it, you can uh, have that too, uh, but you have to make the choice. You have to make the choice that you're not going to be chasing um, endlessly, you know, the status symbols, keeping up with the Joneses, um, trying to have more just to have more um, because having more doesn't bring more happiness. It just doesn't. And there's so much research on that. Yeah, 
Yeah. And, and I think the other thing is we've become a society that just focuses in on multitasking. Multitasking is a strategy people use to get their work done. The reality is when you multitask, it takes almost three times as long to get your work done, and it's riddled with mistakes. So I think we fool ourselves. Um, we fool ourselves saying, oh, I'm taking a lunch break, but I'm really going to do my email while I'm eating a sandwich in the corner. Well, that isn't really all that enjoyable and all that refreshing. Um, I tell people I think it's really important that they do something I call mojo making. And mojo making is about making intentional time for happiness rituals, doing things that bring you happy just because they do. I, uh, <laughs> I was out in LA not too long ago, and I had a hectic schedule, and I was starting to feel myself get a little harried. So before I had a speech to give, I went down to the coffee shop, and I sat there, and I decided I was going to do one of my happiness rituals right then and there, which is pretty easy for me to do because one of the ones that I love the most is just eating dark chocolate. It just tastes so good, and when I close my eyes, eyes and I take a couple of moments to really enjoy it. I just I just kind of calm right down. Well, on this particular day, I had my headphones on. It was a busy coffee shop, so I did it. I spent my three minutes eating my three pieces of dark chocolate, close my eyes, open up my eyes, and I look around, and the whole cafe is like staring at me. I'm like, why are they, they couldn't have noticed my eyes were shut. And apparently, I was so engrossed in the moment, I was moaning and enjoying my chocolate so much. This guy comes over to me and he says, well, that was the best Harry Met Sally orgasm I ever saw somebody imitate. And I'm like, it wasn't an imitation. The dark chocolate is really good stuff. It makes me feel really good. And and, you know, it's just such a small thing to carry around dark chocolate in your purse or or to do other things that make you happy. And and I think people need to get into the the regular scheduling of happiness rituals. We schedule everything else. Why why don't we schedule them? Yeah, that's right. And those those rituals can look so different for different people, uh, right? And as you were describing eating the dark chocolate you know, I'm thinking about the things that I do and, and people who are longtime listeners to the podcast have probably heard me talk about them before, you know, walking my dogs is one of those happiness rituals for me, um, doing tactile things like playing with Legos, um, is, is something that I really enjoy, uh, to, to just kind of reset my mind, um, kind of recenter myself in the moment, uh, take a little bit of time to take a break. It can be 10 or 15 minutes, but it, it makes a big difference for me. And I have a bunch of those things, right? Like, and, and I don't do all of them all the time. Um, but I try to make sure that I'm doing some of them consistently, uh, every day, uh, scattered throughout the day so that I can have breaks that I can, um, yeah. take a moment to recharge, especially if, if I'm feeling clustered or I'm feeling anxious or I'm mm-hmm. feeling frustrated or whatever, like it's more important than, than ever to make sure that I'm actually taking the time to, to reset. And it makes me just far more effective in what I'm doing, far more productive uh, because I've taken that time to reset. So, so I get, you know, people often say, I don't have, to, that sounds great, but I don't have time. I don't have time to take a walk with my dogs. I don't have time uh, to work out. I don't have time to do this, that, or the other thing. And my response is, I don't have time not to do those things uh, because if I don't do those things, my productivity goes way down uh, and it doesn't take me very long to notice. Uh, and, and I, and I think that many people who've just gotten into the, the, the mode of just constantly go, go, going, running on all cylinders, they've forgotten, uh, oftentimes what it's like, uh, to be able to really unplug for a minute, recharge, take some deep breaths, like just do those basic things um, so that you can uh, reconnect. And- Monetizing digital services since 2004, boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG, where innovation meets monetization. And, and not only find some some meaning and purpose and satisfaction in your work, uh, even when you're doing stuff that maybe isn't super exciting or maybe it's, it's hard or, or whatever, but but to really, um, uh, to just recenter yourself because we, we can get pulled in so many different directions in the modern world 
uh, modern societies, you know, humans in, 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 uh, thousands and thousands of years of human, um, evolution and, and evolutionary psychology have not created us to thrive in today's environment. <laughs> um, you know, we, 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 uh, uh, we weren't made to thrive this way. Uh, we need th- the types of, of rituals and the types of opportunities like you're, you've been describing, uh, or we're not going to be, uh, we're not going to maximize our potential and the potential of the people around us. Yeah. I mean, I, the fact of the matter is too, that a lot of people don't know is that happiness is biological, that when you are happy, something happens inside your brain. If you were to look at your brain, when you were looking at pictures of people you love or things that make you happy, your brain would light up like a Christmas tree. And what happens is it sends neuro, neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin to your body saying, be happy, have more energy. And, and happiness also um, helps you prevent chronic disease, you live longer, you have better energy. And so really, there is just so many reasons for people to lead a happier lifestyle. But I think a lot of times they think that they don't have control. It's not within their power. And I know for me, I learned happiness is an inside job really, really early in life. My mom died really young of pancreatic cancer. And I can remember visiting her in the hospital and she was depressed. She was angry. She was frustrated. And it was the same thing day in and day out. And then one day I walked into the hospital And she had a big smile on her face. She was listening to the radio. Everything changed. And I'm like, Mom, what what changed? She says, you know, I know know I'm terminally ill. I know I'm probably not even going to be here a week from today. But it just occurred to me that happiness is my choice. I can choose to be happy. Do I want to die being angry and scared and, and, and mad at the world and unhappy? Or do I want to enjoy my last days on earth? And I have to tell you, that was a life-changing moment for me because no matter what's going on, how much challenge I have in my life, I think about her. And if she could figure that out, we all have it in us. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we all have it in us. We all have that potential. Um, so maybe talk to us now a little bit more about how we can jumpstart our happiness. So if, if we find ourselves in a rut, uh, if we find ourselves ruminating, if we find ourselves stuck uh, in this constant busyness, how do we reset? How do we jumpstart into you know this this new happiness potential? Yeah, I think I think there's lots of different ways. And you hit the nail on the head when you said it's personal for different people. But one of the pieces of advice I give to people all the time is know your non-negotiables and don't let go of them. And that means things like making sure you're eating correctly, you're getting a good night's sleep, that you're able to be healthy and that you draw boundaries around those things because they are so important. One of the other things I tell people is also to really, really make sure that they're not trying to be a perfectionist. And when good is good enough, that's okay. I mean, you think about the busy mother and she freaks out when her son has wrinkles or stains on their clothes. And really in the scope of things, it doesn't matter. Perfect isn't better. So I think I always tell people, you know, I know I'm a big hot mess. So many things that I do are messy and sloppy and I embrace that. And I tell other people, you know, embrace the fact. And I think the other thing too, that I love to tell people is live in the moment that when you're chasing for the next shiny thing or you're ruminating about what's over you have no control over it you're not a fortune teller you don't know what's going to happen in the future but when you live in the present it really you you get to enjoy life and I had something happen to me during COVID I can remember I had a membership based um, organization where we met for dinner meetings and obviously they weren't anymore, right? I mean, we, we couldn't get together in person. So I was very stressed about that. And one day I decided just to go for a walk and I was busy talking to some of my employees on the phone and we were just in a very negative space. 
And I looked up and I noticed that there was this dog that was a couple of houses over and he was playing with a butterfly. He literally was, the butterfly would land on his nose, he would flick it up, in a couple of minutes the butterfly would go down. And this happened for like 10 minutes. I mean, what a magical moment. I've, I've made videos about that because to me it was just so incredible that this dog was doing this and this butterfly was cooperating and you know it was kind of a hallmark card and I would have missed that because of my busyness so it's so important to just you know enjoy yourself to smell to see to look around to get out of your own head and just uh, just be quiet and enjoy the moment so those are a couple of things that I usually tell people Yeah, and I think it's important to recognize, uh, of course, this applies to us in our personal lives, um, but this applies to us in the workplace. And so if I'm leading a team uh, at work, uh, I need to be mindful about my own well-being, my own uh, mental and physical health. Uh, I need to be mindful of my own happiness and, and the mo modeling that I'm doing for my team. And I need to make it a priority to foster mm -hmm job satisfaction, uh, engagement, meaning, and purpose uh, in my team and give them an opportunity to to do these same things. So if I'm the type of boss that's writing my people constantly, trying to like squeeze every last little ounce of productivity out of everyone all the time, uh, people don't have an opportunity to to take a lunch break. They they don't feel like they can take days off. They um you know they they feel like there's no work-life balance. Uh, they, they feel like they're constantly on and have to be at the beck and call of, of their leader. You know, if that's my approach, um, you know, I, I probably am not going to be getting the best out of my team and I'm not going to be keeping my team for very long because they're going to be going somewhere yeah. else. Uh, and so I, as a leader, I need to be very mindful about this in, in fostering a really great culture amongst my team where we can be happy. Uh, you know, and that doesn't mean we have to love everything we're doing all the time. Everyone has stuff in their jobs that they don't really like as much as other things. Um, that's part of the deal. Like that's part of how we, we function as adults. Uh, and, and I don't think anyone expects to be doing what they love all the time, but, we, we need to have enough of those things that we're interested in, passionate about, that we find meaning in, uh, and we have to have opportunities to contribute in meaningful ways consistently. And if we don't, uh, and if we're, you know, if we have a boss that creates a toxic environment, we're not going to be happy. We're not, and when you're not, when you're not happy, when you're not um, taking care of yourself, you're not going to be as productive. You're not going to have as much creativity and innovation. You're not going to drive as many good results for the team, for the organization, or to bring value to the market, which is, of course is going to hurt the organization. So it really is a no brainer that we need to be focusing on this as leaders. Yeah, I think that's why you have so many things going on in the organizations. You know, you have it, it hard to retain employees. You've got um, quiet quitting, the average employee not taking their vacation time, or people live, leaving the office because they feel as though my employer doesn't care on me. And the research that I've done, a lot of it has come down to employees feeling like they're spending their time in low value transactions, things that just don't matter. They want to be making a difference. They want to be getting things done. But when they're tied up in meetings where they have no voice, when they're focused on always on communications and interrupted every hour on the hour, it's, it's just really hard. And what happens is they get to the end of their day and it's like, okay, now I can start to do my real job, right? I spent all this time doing all this other stuff. My boss told me to. I had all these meetings. I needed to cross-pollinate. All of that stuff happens, and it just leads to burnout and to total frustrations. I work with a lot of organizations um, on, on two things that I call the barometers. One is the busyness barometer, where it just really goes in there and understands how employees spend their time and what low value transactions are spending time doing. Because once you start to eliminate those, productivity goes way, way up. And the other thing that I found is that a lot of employees feel like their employers just 
don't care. They don't care about their value and what's important to them. And so it's also really important. I've got another uh, barometer that I call the wellness, which really focuses in on mental health and whether it feels like your employer cares about you and that your immediate boss takes the time and the energy to do things and, and to make you feel valued. And, and both of those things are, are so important. And that's why so many organizations are really struggling, you know, with performance. Yes, it's tough times. Yes, the economy is tough. Yes, there are a lot of shortages going on, but we need to get back to the basics, taking care of our people. You take care of your people, they will take care of you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, And if you take care of your people and you show that you genuinely care and you invest in them, uh, they will perform and they will have greater levels of commitment and loyalty. So when we talk about attracting and retaining good people, it starts with building that trust and in, in how you treat them and creating that healthy dynamic mm-hmm. environment. Um, and, and, and so we have to pay attention to it. And as you've mentioned a few times, you know, the, the time element to all of this is just really key uh, because we you can't endlessly ask for more and more and more from people um while giving them fewer resources and that's been kind of the traditional model in the west is like let's just figure out how to do, we're going to bootstrap everything we're constantly going to figure out how to do more and more with less and less uh and then eventually some new technology comes along and it displaces workers and blah 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 um that that game is played out over and over and over again in organizations and with workers and uh so it, no wonder that employees are a little bit skeptical uh, mm-hmm. that their that their employers you know are, have their interests at heart um, that are going to make sure that they are taken care of that they're going to be invested in and a big part of that is just simply how you deal with time how do you respect the time of your people do you do you provide them with the autonomy to do their work in a way that makes sense to them do you do you foster a, a healthy work life balance do you um in your own practices do you do you demonstrate and model for them uh, how to be more healthy in your approach to time management and taking those times to pause all those things we've been discussing all of that is very very essential Well, Peggy, this has just been a really fun conversation. I note the time and I'm going to have to let you go here in just a minute. But before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you and find out more about your work, uh, where they can find your book, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Absolutely. Well, first of all, you can find me on my website, which is PeggySullivanSpeaker.com. And if you have any interest in getting connected with a like-minded female group, um, there's the shecannetwork.com. And I would have to say my feeding thought is, is that there is a sweet spot between peak performance and the busyness treadmill. And you can find it through some very intentional day in, day out decisions and Anyone that is interested in a free workbook or learning more about any of that stuff, I've got lots of tools and tricks. Go to my website, and I'd be more than happy to, um, you know, help you figure it out. I wish I wish I hit the jackpot earlier in life. I wish I knew that I could get just as much done, be just as successful, and maybe work a little less and be a little happier. So I know for me, I'm passionate about helping other people find that. Wonderful. Thank you, Peggy. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage my audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Peggy can do for you. Check out her book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. You enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.